The Unify zone-based firewall makes management easier, but that also assumes that you're configuring it properly, which you may or may not be doing. In this video, I'll walk through five best practices to help you get the most out of the Unify zone-based firewall so your network is not only functional, but secure too, and we are going to jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to talk through is coming up with the zones that you should be using. Now, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to do this, and just about everybody that's watching this video will probably do it slightly differently. The one thing I'll say is that there are people that feel like each VLAN should be in its own zone, and there are others that like to group them. I tend to think that you should group your VLANs into different zones because that's really where you're going to get the most value. So to kind of talk through that, what we're going to do is look at the current zones and then we are going to add to it. So these are the default zones here, internal, external, gateway, VPN, hotspot, and DMZ. Every single person using the Unify zone-based firewall will have these. And what you're going to see is that for now, all of the VLANs that I'm currently using are in the internal zone. Now the internal zone is kind of a special zone because what you'll see down here is that the internal zone has access to everything. So unlike the future zones that we're going to create, the internal zone and just about anything inside of it will have access to everything, including the other VLANs inside of the internal zone. So if we narrow down here, what you'll see is internal, internal, we have allow all traffic. And what that ultimately means is that any of the VLANs that are inside of the internal zone will be able to communicate with one another. So right off the bat, you'll see that we have an IoT and a guest network here, and we're probably not going to want those to communicate with our management and or trusted VLAN. So we have to come up with a zone or we can use an existing zone. And this is where that grouped versus individual from a zone perspective starts to come into play. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a zone. I'm going to call this untrusted internet and then I'm going to select the IOT zone and then I'm going to add it. And now we have a new zone. So let's quickly talk about what that zone can currently do. So what you'll see is that the untrusted internet zone cannot access the internal zone. It also can access VPN, hotspot, DMV, or even untrusted internet, meaning the other VLANs inside of this zone. So right there, that's a big difference between internal and creating your own zone. In the internal zone, the VLANs can communicate with each other. In a new zone that you create, the VLANs cannot communicate with each other. And that fact right there is the reason why I like to create zones where I can group multiple VLANs rather than creating one zone for each VLAN. And the real reason is because even if you have multiple VLANs inside of that zone, they will not be able to communicate with each other unless you explicitly allow it. So now that we know how the internal zone differs from any of the new zones that you create, what should be in the internal zone? Well, for me, the way I've always done it is that any of the VLANs that you trust should be inside of the internal zone, but you don't necessarily have to do that. If you don't want to use the internal zone at all, you don't have to. But the internal zone is kind of powerful from a perspective that anything that you put inside of it is for the most part going to have access to everything else. The only exception being that it will not have access to any of the new zones that you create. So those are really the first two lessons that we're learning here. The internal zone and any zones you create are going to function very, very differently. And the zones you create, specifically the VLANs inside of them, will not be able to communicate with one another. And that is the reason why I like to group VLANs as opposed to basically creating an individual zone for each VLAN. So now with that out of the way, what is the way that you should use zones? Well, the way that you should use zones is to basically set a predefined set of firewall rules where adding a VLAN to it will, in essence, give it access to what it needs without giving it too much access. So we're going to keep building this untrusted internet zone. So we have untrusted internet. We do not want it to communicate with anything inside of the internal zone. 
But what we do want it to communicate with is the internet. We also want it to communicate with the gateway. This is going to be for things like DNS. So we need it to communicate with the gateway, though you can limit access down, which we'll talk about later, but just about everything else it should not be able to communicate with. So now let's say I come in and I create a new VLAN, a surveillance VLAN. We're going to put it in the untrusted internet zone, and then we're going to add it. And if we go back to the zone-based firewall, what you'll see is that the surveillance VLAN will now assume the same access as the IoT VLAN, but it will not be able to communicate with the IoT VLAN. So if you're somebody that has a few different VLANs that you basically just don't want them to communicate with each other, you don't want them to communicate with your trusted VLAN, you might realistically only have to create one zone or you could even use the DMZ zone, but DMZ zone you might wanna save in case you ever want to expose anything to the external internet. But that one zone will ultimately do what we need. So now that we created this zone, why didn't I put the guest VLAN in that zone? The hotspot VLAN is really designed for guest networks. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the guest VLAN to the hotspot zone. And now the guest VLAN will assume all of these predefined firewall rules that are really designed for guest networks. So that's one easy way to isolate the guest network. But the one thing you have to keep in mind with the hotspot zone is that it's going to add a landing page. So what I mean by that is if we go to networks and then we click into guest, what you're going to see is it's part of the hotspot zone. And the hotspot zone has its own settings. So if we click inside of here, this is going to be the landing page that now that guest network will use. A lot of people aren't going to want to use this. So inside of the gear icon here, you can uncheck this show landing page, save the options here, and then just double check inside of your guest Wi-Fi network to ensure that captive portal is off, and then it will utilize whatever your password is. So that's an easy way that you can isolate the guest network and basically ensure that it doesn't have access to anything else. So now that we have our VLANs exactly where we want them to be, we can start to create firewall rules. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow the trusted network to communicate with the IoT network and the surveillance network as well. And that's basically saying we're allowing the internal zone to communicate with the untrusted zone, but not vice versa. So what we have to do is we have to come inside of here and create a new policy. And there's a few important things that you have to be aware of when you're doing this. So if you give the firewall rule a name, what you'll see is that you're selecting a source zone and a destination zone. So we know the destination zone is untrusted. And then basically, if we allow access here, this rule will state that the internal zone can communicate with the untrusted zone and the untrusted zone can reply to that traffic. Now, if we add this policy, what you'll see is that we can now access everything in the untrusted zone from the internal zone and the untrusted zone can return traffic, but it cannot initiate traffic. So it can't create a new connection to the internal zone, but it can reply to that traffic. Now, I really wanna highlight what we just did because that's the power of the zone-based firewall. We created a firewall rule from zone to zone. We did not create a firewall rule from VLAN to zone. So now anything that is added to the internal zone will automatically be allowed to communicate with the untrusted zone. So let's say you didn't want to do that. Let's say you only wanted your trusted VLAN to be able to communicate with the untrusted zone. This firewall rule would be different. We wouldn't allow any VLANs from the internal zone. We would allow an individual network from the internal zone we would select trusted, we would apply the changes, and then what you'll see is we're back to block all. And it's not really block all, it's just that we're basically poking a hole through the firewall. So we're saying this one VLAN can communicate with the other zone, but not everything. So now that we understand kind of how the zone-based firewall works, how should you set it up? That's obviously the most important part. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you my setup. 
Now I have a lot of VLANs and a lot more VLANs than you're probably going to have. And we're not gonna look through all these firewall rules, but what we're going to do is basically look at how I set this up so that you can come up with an idea for your own setup. So I have two zones that I created, untrusted internet and untrusted no internet. And what you'll see is basically the difference between them is that one can access the internet and one cannot. So if we click into untrusted no internet and then we go to external here, what you'll see is that I'm blocking internet access and then I allow a few specific devices to access the internet. But anything that is added to this zone by default will not be able to communicate with the internet. It also will not be able to communicate with just about anything else. It won't be able to communicate with the internal zone. It won't be able to communicate with any of the other zones as well. I do the exact same thing for untrusted internet. The only difference is it can communicate with the internet. I do block a few devices, but overall, that's the main difference between both of them. Now inside of the gateway, I basically have individual firewall rules to block specific ports. So I'm blocking ports 80, 443, and 22 on the gateway. So I'm basically saying anything that is added to this zone cannot communicate with the UDM itself either. In my opinion, these two zones will accomplish 95 to 98% of people's requirements. You're either going to be untrusted and not be able to communicate with anything other than the internet, or you're going to be untrusted and not be able to communicate with anything, and you will not be able to communicate with the internet either. What this allows me to do is go in and create a new VLAN, add it to one of my zones, and realistically not really have to create any other firewall rules. Now there's obviously a lot more to creating firewall rules, and they're gonna be highly specific to you. But the reason I created this video is because there's many different approaches that I've seen people try and follow. And just because I don't necessarily implement individual zones doesn't mean that you shouldn't, but it does mean that you should fully think through exactly why you're doing what you're doing. Try and consolidate zones where you can because it will save you in the long run. And overall, get to a point where you can manage your network securely and easier for the future. So I hope you got some value out of this video. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. But other than that, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.